Surprise Comics. 15 years. 15 years I have FOMO'd over this book, and I have missed out. I have missed out on owning this book for 15 years. Until now, I have finally secured a copy for my personal collection. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the life cycle of this book and try to glean from it some helpful tips on how it can be applied to future purchases and some very interesting things about comic books related to TV shows. But without further ado, the book that, I has finally been acquired the walking dead number one the black mature readers edition i'll throw it up on the screen those of you that know you know some of you are going to be fomoing bad after watching this video shout out to nerdy old woman i think you need to just pull the trigger and get yourself one now might be the right time to do it others of you are going to be looking at this book going why in the world is he so passionate about that but even if that is you i think you'll understand when i explain what this book means to me and why um, you know it's so important to me. Um, so it's the Black Mature Reader's Edition. This is Walking Dead number one. It's the first appearance of Rick Grimes, Shane Walsh, Morgan, and Dwayne Jones. And uh, this book had an original print run of around 7,700 copies. And when they initially started printing the book, the little uh, text underneath the price that says Mature Readers was printed in black and they decided that that was too difficult to read. So they stopped the print and reprinted it with the words mature readers printed in white. So the printer estimates that something around 10% of the print run has the mature readers. Um, it's widely debated in the comic community. Some people say it's much more than that, but either way, if it was 10% of the print run, it means that there's only about 700 of these black mature reader variants. And one of the things that's frustrating about this variant is that GPA does not differentiate it on its sales data. So all of the sales are lumped in together, whether they're the white variant or the black variant. And I think because of that, the prices don't fluctuate too much. I mean, you will see people asking a premium for the black mature readers, but when they come to auction, they often sell right in line with the regular uh, print. It's just one of those things I think that it's just has to do with it not being, you know, notated on the label and not broken out in the sales data, which just goes to show how important companies like CGC labeling things correctly and how important, you know, companies like GP Analysis c collecting sales data is to the value of books. I mean, when these things fall apart, those two things, so do the prices of the books. When you rely on just people knowing, especially in an auction situation, people knowing the difference between a white and a black, I mean, I guarantee you there's been many, many people that have purchased this black variant not even knowing that there's a variant out there. So uh, it's an interesting point right there that speaks to, you know, the impact and the influence that grading companies and, you know, sales, uh, data collection apps and things like that have on the comic book community. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about this book. But before we go any further, let's hop into the computer and take a look at the sales data for this book and talk about some interesting points related to the show and the comic book sales. Here we are on gpanalysis.com and we're looking at The Walking Dead number one that came out in 2003 for the comic book. And this is one of the most interesting and bizarre price graphs for a comic book that I've ever seen. There are a few other comic books that are related to ongoing TV shows that have a similar graph like this, uh, but they're far and few in between. And what's so interesting about it is how closely the values correlate to how well the show is doing and announcements about the show. Of course, we're all very familiar with those trends, but you know, for an ongoing series like this, 12 years strong, uh, we have some interesting things to talk about here. So here's when the book first came out in 2003. Of course, you could get uh, a 9.8 copy of issue number one for around that $30, $40, $50 range, about cover price plus the cost of grading. It took about three years of the comic to continue before we started to see prices around the $200 mark. And this this is just pure comic book fans. At this point, you know, the people buying this book for 200 bucks just love the series, have faith in the series, and uh, there was no show uh, rumors or announcements yet. It wasn't until October of 2010 that the show actually premiered, and that's when we started to see prices around that four or $500 mark. It's interesting, there wasn't like a huge run-up uh, with rumors and announcements about this. I think people probably still had their reservations about, you know, how 
how much life and legs this show actually would have if it came out. Certainly, we saw some elevated prices, but not like the drastic up and downs that we're used to seeing with Marvel-related stuff. And then uh, what's really interesting here is two years go by. It's about two seasons of the show actually being released before we start to see prices really increase. And this probably has to do with, you know, people having more faith in the show, more people being brought into the show, and uh, consequently, the prices of the comic books going up until around 2012, we start to see those prices hit that $3,000 mark. And right around 2008, 2009 is when I started reading the comic, and I absolutely would have loved to have an issue number one, but I was in my early 20s at this time, and 36 years old now, and four or $500 was out of the question for anything that I can spend on comic books. I remember buying issues like eight, nine, and 10 for about 10 or $15 a piece, and that was a lot to me back then. And I ended up getting, you know, pretty much a full run uh, of the series starting at like issue 10, um, which turned, which ended up burning in a wildfire, which, you know, is another part of the reason why, you know, this book is so important to me is, you know, there's so much history with it. Um, but the show starts to do really well around 2012, tons of diehard fans. And that's when the comic book prices are staying steady around two, three thousand dollars more in the $2,000 range, uh, pretty flat here for about three or four years. And we see another run up uh, and around 2016. And what's interesting about this is this is the first time we started seeing those peak prices over $4,000. This is, and then something happens where the prices start to drop off dramatically. And if we go over here, this uh, little website shows uh, the different seasons and when they first aired. Around 2016 is when we saw uh, the end of season six and the start of season seven. And this was when in the show, Glenn, they did a fake death of Glenn, or they did like a cliffhanger of Glenn. He was stuck underneath a dumpster, I believe. He was covered in zombies. And I remember watching that show. It was like the, the cliffhanger season finale or something, or maybe it was just an episode finale. And I remember thinking and t talking to my friends that we were watching the show with, there was absolutely no way that he survives this. The way that they filmed that shot of him being covered in zombies, they're like biting him or ready to bite him. There is zero chance that he survives that. And I remember saying, if they bring him back from this, or if they show that he was able to somehow get out of that, that would be the lamest thing I've ever seen in a TV show. And sure enough, they brought, they, they, they go to the next episode and he had said, oh, Glenn didn't die, only to immediately have him brutally murdered by Negan in one of the most brutal and gruesome on-screen portrayals of a murder ever. And it was incredibly graphic. Um, if you watch watched the show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was exactly lined up and tied into what they did in the comics. It's the exact way, like to a T, how it went down in the comics. And what you see after that is a steady decline in viewership. And what's so interesting is a, a direct correlation to the value of the comic book. People left the show. I remember tons of my friends were like, I am done. I am not watching this. That was some of the lamest you know, storytelling I've ever seen to have him fake killed and then bring him back to brutally murder him. The, the, like the next episode was just super lame and a bunch of people left the show. And uh, I, I just think that it's really interesting that the prices, uh, you know, line up exactly with that. And so here would have been a good time to actually buy in. Um, you were seeing prices, average prices down around $1,600. And this is right when I started my business, right around 2020 as I started doing comic books full time. And of course, that's also when when the comic book boom happened, the market boom in 2020, 2021, and prices doubled, like almost overnight, they went from around $2,000 to around $4,000, setting all new record highs at $4,900. And at this point, I thought, nope, there's no way I'm buying into this now. It's doubled overnight. And the future of this show, I mean, uh, we, this show is still going at this point, mind you. We're in season 11. The season finale of uh, the series finale was until November of 2022. So at this point in the market boom, you know, it's still the ongoing series. We haven't seen the finale yet. 
Um, and I thought there's just no way that this would be a good time to buy in. It's It's got nowhere to go but down from here. And then, of course, you know, uh, we saw the market correction and I started to think, OK, now might be a good time to buy in. We're back down to around twenty two hundred dollars. Um, but I really wanted the black mature reader variant and they don't come up all that often. I couldn't find one to pull the trigger. And then what happens? The, C- the series finale comes out and there's all of this renewed interest in The Walking Dead. The book is trending again when we saw this pump in the book goes back up to you know highs of around thirty five hundred dollars and i thought nah, i missed my window now it's going to be a while before this comes down in price again and then of course it does come down in price um, and i was able to pick it up just recently so i almost forgot to say how i ended up acquiring it so a seller reached out and said i'm selling this collection the first book that i see is the walking dead number one 9.8 black variant and i go oh my god here it is here it is in the collection of books that i've actually hunting I couldn't believe it really it was like what are the odds because this is this book has never come through the shop so uh, I look up the values I tell him okay the books are selling you know total for around seven thousand dollars and he says oh wow that was a lot less than I was expecting I think he just hadn't looked up prices in a while we ended up working out a deal where I paid five thousand eight hundred and fifty they're worth about seven and so when you factor in selling fees say selling fees are ten percent that's seven hundred dollars uh, it's about 6300 I paid 5850 So at the end of the day, you know, I maybe got the, the Walking Dead book for $450 off, but likely it's just a wash. I didn't get any kind of discount and just added all this work. Uh, but, you know, this is the book that it was in my sights and FOMO got the best of me. I didn't want to let it uh, pass by um, because, you know, I was hunting it anyways. Here it was in my sights. Who knows when it's going to come up again at auction. And, you know, there's always the possibility that it has, you know, uh, an anomaly high sale at that time. So I'm happy with the deal. Seller got a fantastic deal on his books and I was able to acquire, you know, a book that has been on my radar for so many years. All in all, it was a great deal. Before we get any further, congratulations to Black Mariachi. You are the winner of the YouTube giveaway for February. And congratulations to Ellery Quayley. You are the winner of the newsletter giveaway at BryceComics.com. So what does the future hold for this book, this series on TV, and for the values of this comic book? Well, this kind of goes against my collecting philosophy, which is collect what you love, but also collect things that have a potential potential upside. I'm not too convinced that The Walking Dead number one really has too much of an upside because of how flat the sales were for so many years for this book, despite the popularity, you know, not a whole lot of increases, not steady increases, more reactions to things like the economy and the portrayals on the show, but not just that steady blue chip rise that we see in a lot of books. So I don't have a ton of faith in this book, but I've thrown that out the window. My Collecting and investing, you know, philosophies have gone out the window and have succumbed to FOMO and emotion. And I got to say, it feels great. It feels great to just, you know, not care about that and just own this book and secure it for the PC. I absolutely love this series. What it speaks to me about, you know, this time in my life uh, when I started reading this book. I started reading The Walking Dead about 15 years ago. I'm 36 years old, so it's almost half of my life. There's been some kind of influence from The Walking Dead. The influence that this series have, has had on comic books and like, you know, invigorating the genre. Genre, the horror genre, the zombie apocalypse genre, and you know, breathing life into comic books getting optioned and turning into really valuable properties. You know, this book has, uh, as say what you will about the series, I know that they have failed in a lot of ways about the TV show, um, but it has still had a monumental impact on pop culture, on comic books, on TV, and on the horror genre. So I'm super happy to own it. Uh, I will likely never, uh, it will likely never leave my collection and thank you you know for celebrating with me as as i acquire this this personal grail of mine i think it brings up some interesting points about you know us as collectors i just saw you know, mickey's video at swaggle Haas comics if you're not subscribed to swaggle Haas, uh, go check him out and he talked did a video about him turning 40 and uh the demographics of people collecting and buying comic books and i think that this lines up with that uh in an interesting way is now that i'm you know having uh, some success in my career. I can finally afford
afford to buy those books that were influential to me when I was younger, not necessarily a kid, but when I was younger, certainly, you know, uh, in my early 20s. And this was the book for me. Walking Dead number one was the most influential book in my comic book journey, um, you know, when I was a kid. Since then, you know, Silver Age Grails, Golden Age Grails have taken way more precedence over modern keys like this. But it is an interesting point is, you know, there's a lot of talk about what's the future of collecting? What are kids today going to be buying? And, uh, you know, so if I'm buying The Walking Dead, I know I'm not like a good representation of the general comic book community because I'm a dealer and it gets super convoluted when, when you factor that in. But, you know, what is the casual collector going to be buying 10, 20 years down the road? And it might be, you know, the things that they couldn't afford now. And that speaks a lot to Miles Morales, Spider Gwen, you know, a lot of these pop culture, uh, you know, super popular characters and properties with young kids. Uh, so I'll definitely be thinking about some future videos and doing some research into that and figuring out what's going to be a good investment today that kids, when they finally get into a stable career, are going to be purchasing. So stay tuned for a future video like that. If videos like that would be helpful to you and if you found this interesting at all, please consider hitting subscribe if you're not already and you'll be entered to win a free slab, brand new giveaways for this month. And if you head over to bryscomics.com and sign up for the newsletter, you're entered to win a free slab over there each and every month. I have some really exciting mystery boxes with some grail grand prizes coming soon. And that's where they will first be announced. Also, if you use code collect Collect 10 at BriceComics.com. You get 10% uh, off all in-stock items. Thank you, as always, for sticking with me to the end of the video. Don't forget to check me out over on Whatnot for uh, weekly comic book auctions. Tons of fun over on Whatnot. Follow me on Instagram for Trades for Grails and other fresh content over there. I appreciate you sticking with me to the end. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.